so from last two sessions what we learned is spring core framework is having lot of features at the same time as a developer we need to put efforts on configurations and during coding also a lot of time we should spend as well as there is no much deployment and monitoring support there whereas spring boot made everything simple from configurations to deployment everything in any, every layer up to whatever maximum possibility possibilities are there to reduce the burden up to maximum they reduced it so from the development there are very less configuration support guys don't unmute during session okay yeah so very less configurations that we do during implementation and important is skeleton to create skeleton there is much support we have here easily you can create any project which is a microservice project or a simple web application it's a you know minutes job quickly you can do that setup and for the runtime environment also you need not any you know particular servers to set up just having a server with java is sufficient maybe if you want to build your code again in production also you may need maven support here otherwise having java itself is sufficient to run your code and dependency management became simple and easier you need not to create dependencies manually you can go to the tool and add all your dependencies so it will add during dependencies adding it will add only compatibility jars only it will not add anything which is incompatible so you need not to worry about dependencies compatibility issues you should also okay so there we started you know a simple tool how to use the online tool how to generate a project so using spring io starter project right spring io team starter dot io you can call spring initializer using the spring initializer you can generate project whichever you want and the same stuff you can do by using this id as well sts id once you install sts id right same setup you can do here if you comparison if you do comparison side by side right both do the same stuff if i show you here find new starter project so now you can compare here so you can see here so the type of project you can choose same we have here project type maven here also you have the three options choose whichever you want and language kotlin groovy support also given java we want to develop it in java and the supporting java version we are giving 17 and 21 support same thing you can see here and spring boot version mainly 
we have to choose spring boot version that is in next page okay so here you can give group id artifact name application name all here same thing you need to do here then on click next you will be seeing here spring boot version the same versions available here you can choose whichever version you want 3.1.6 these are stable releases i think snapshots are not stable releases maybe so you can choose the stable releases rather than snapshots okay so you can select a, a release here then choose which kind of packaging you want that is happened in previous page itself here packaging on the second option itself given so here you have and to add the dependencies here we have this section right same way here we have add button on click add button it will give you one search window so here you can add and generate them it's a lombok i want let's add it same way here also if you want to search for lombok search for it. lombok and for previous projects which are you used those dependencies auto suggestions you will get here in your id so that easily you can remember which is you added for previous microservice usually in microservices you used to do continuous microservice implementations so the previous projects dependencies that frequently used you can see here and the next finish so things are simple here in ID itself so you need not to use this online tool in case if you don't have this support STS in your you know organization if they have only IntelliJ then go here generate the project after this right click on generate it will generate code for you and just extract that code and import into your IntelliJ. Let me show you that. Extract all. And as soon as you get it here, you can open your IntelliJ ID or Eclipse, and you can import. Just a minute. New project open. This is the project path. So this is the demo project. Click on OK. Trust this project. Okay, project will be open here. So if you want to do development in IntelliJ, you can do IntelliJ also providing a lot of features. For coding, I prefer uh, basically Eclipse for coding part. And apart from coding for code cleanup, for sonar fixes, and for duplicates identification, code redundancy issues, I used to prefer actually IntelliJ. So once I do coding in Eclipse, I'll close the Eclipse window. Same project again I used to open in IntelliJ for doing all the code cleanup stuff. But if you want to start development here itself, you can you can do that as well. But I don't have much hands. Sonar code cleanups we do, right? Code redundancies, duplicate lines, unnecessary initializations.
Okay, fine. Yeah, that we will discuss in next concept. Okay. So that is for code quality we use code quality tool. Okay. Just just Google it. You will get some names. So once it is ready, you can use here run. It will run your application. Enable annotation processing. So same application running here. Yeah. And if you want to do Maven, same clean build that stuff, go here, Maven option. Here you have this execute Maven goal option. And here you can give your commands, Maven, M-E-N, clean, install, run it. It will do all that Maven clean build stuff. Basically, after clean, right, it will delete all the targets. Then install will build your code. And it will generate a jar file for the execution so you will be getting a jar file post installation okay as we don't have any instructions right it will generate a jar file yeah so using this jar usually we use this jar file in productions in production we don't open any eclipse and run the code there right so we give the generated jar file to the production. There they use it, open it in Explorer. Once we share this jar file, as I shown you yesterday, right? So this jar commands used to pass to from demo jar. From DevApps pipeline, they pass these commands on your server and they will start the server. Or directly if you have access, you can access it. If it is a Linux by a putty, you can access and go to your jar file location and you can start it. Application will start. Okay. So end of the day, we need the jar to execute our code in the productions. Okay. There, what you need to do if you don't have jar file only source code is available then you need to do maven clean install there so maven is not available <coughs> i think maven maven class path is not set in my machine mvn command itself is not available it's okay. So if you have Maven class path, then you would able to run it. After Maven installation, it should be available here. Not sure. Yeah. So this is how you can generate project and load it into IntelliJ and you can work or else you can use Eclipse as well if you want. Once you generate a project from initializer, you can use Eclipse also. So all Java IDs will support it. And uh, they given support with uh, Visual Studio also. So you can use Visual Studio as well. Okay. When STS is not available, don't you know, panic how I can create skeleton and all. 
you can use online tool and comfortably you can start working on Eclipse also. Don't demand for STS. If not available, you can use Eclipse as well. I hope they must have given like Gins as well, but we need not directly can generate and import and work. So go to file, do the visual import here. Existing project, existing Maven project. You should choose. Go back. Maven. Browse demo. Yeah. We can import here as well. Yeah, demo got imported here. So what you can do, you can do as usual. Actually, we have dependency not added, but still okay. Run it. Unsupported class version. So we generated project in Java 17. I hope uh, we have Java 8 here. Compiler version. Yeah. Change this to. Okay, T12 I have here. In installed JRGS, I must have Java 17. Standard VM. So choose your just class path, just a class path, okay. just class path. Did you learn what is class path? Your compiler path, just a simple thing. So you can see here I added JDK 17. Why I came to JDK 17 here? Because my Spring Boot project is in either 17 or 21. So in local first install JDK 17 in your machine. I have installed it in my machine. Project, not project, ID. No, no, it is for project, class, paths, and all for ID. Yeah. So check your versions, whatever you have here, only that versions you can able to add there. So I have 17 also, 21 is not there yet. If I install 21, I can add 21 as well. So as I have 17, I'm adding it into my now what it will do by default in general when you write it in notepad you need to compile it but usually ide what it will do it will compile automatically when you do a small change it will compile and check whether your code is good or not so as earlier one is java 8 we changed here to java 17 okay so this is like your class path so only JDK 17 now it will refer, it will start referring this and compiler also we need to upgrade it to oh, no compiler setting here. Okay. 
just let it use the class path uh, compiler only run it As Java application, what you have issue Java build path JDK seventeen edit workspace default also seventeen only finish finish. To maximum all I have. Okay. Right. So. an update build my code JN error has occurred. Please check your installation and try again. Oops. Problem with you. Class loader. Unsupportable version. Okay. Up to 52 means 12. And uh, this compiled version runtime only recognizes the files version of 252. If I run char file, will it not support? Space hyphen jar demo jar. What path we have by default here is. Do you see Java path I have set here? Docker path refers to 17 is there. Okay. In which line? I don't see it. Java path, okay. Yeah. So it is 17, so it is running there. Eclipse not able to adopt it. 
I don't know why. Compiler can't be set here. Build path. Workspace. Properties compiler. So I'm selecting one point it complains is currently seventeen. Can't we add new version here? Enabled project specific settings, okay. Not supporting seventeen. Compliances, make sure you have compiler uh, JRE installed and activated. You know how to upgrade this instead of default one. Uh, Yeah, that is, but how I can upgrade? I can see only until this version. Yeah, I'll check it out but for time being yeah. I need to upgrade that actually I'll check it out how to upgrade it if not we'll use the new Eclipse So basically, you can generate tool via generate you can uh, via tool you can generate your project whichever you want and you can import into any ID and you can start working on it. If you have STS, then no worries, STS will do everything for you. Okay, and up to, STS also up to date. You need to put it if old version STS you choose. Maybe it may not suitable to a latest Spring Boot. So Check on that when you go here, right? Spring starter project. See that whether it is intact with the uh, starter IO project. Same URL, right? You can 
open and check the version compatibilities so if your id is not compatible then maybe you can update your id as well okay now coming to features that we have here go to docs spring docs okay spring documentation docs dot spring i will learn more new fit start project spring boot so spring boot features getting started First, learn core features. Okay, core features. Default they given so much support here. Let's understand that first. Okay, then we can jump into the web other dependencies. Now, coming into the the first thing that we need to see here is once after creation of any project here, right? Spring Boot project. A default one main method class is generated. What is that? And what it is doing? and how you can differentiate it with the core the spring framework okay so simple first example to understand spring boot application so generate a project maven java farm.rbu spring boot application package name simple Hello package. Next, just finish. I'm not adding any dependencies. Just create a project. So once you create a project, basic project without any dependencies, still it is generating. Why initializer? Oh, we made it where? Let me delete it. Starter project packaging. I want to know where just check. Next, finish. So by default, you can see a class generated with a properties file and nothing else. Your POM file. And in this application class, you can see, you can see at the rate Spring Boot application and some stuff I have here. Main method Spring application dot run. Usually, if it is a Spring application, what we do, we create some packages, we write some classes on it, and we do some dependency injection, we do create some configuration classes and all. So, then I want to start the same thing here. I want to create some classes here. I want to create some classes, basic stereotypes. Spring Boot application, basic stereotypes. com. rbu. hello. Web. Just consider I don't have any web dependency, but yeah, create a web service repo and some configuration classes. Config, and if you need utilities, some utility classes also. Utility. So write simple stereotype classes here yeah, web 
I want a controller here. So just add hello controller. Annotate with that the rate controller. System dot out dot printable. Hello controller object. Nothing. So create uh, service here. Hello service. Hello service object created. Repository. Just I want to check how it will create objects. In traditional Spring, we used to maintain a properties file. There we used to put component scan stuff. Then components can use to scan our packages and it used to create objects. And some add config class. And then configuration. Usually in configuration class, what we do, we do create at the rate means public something string. Usually we create objects. Return anything here. and uh, utility class. Hello, utility. And here I'll be using component, right? So when we have stereotypes across, right? When we when we have stereotype across application. How do we manage these objects? We create these objects using at the component scan. Using component scan, we scan all these packages, or at least up to root package we used to give. Then your IOC container, when you load your XML into IOC container, it used to scan all these classes and it used to create objects. For that purpose, we used to create one XML file here. Just let me create a spring.xml. They used to do component column, context column, component scan. This package. Something like this we used to give and we used to load it into one main method. Something application context. 
ap equal to new class path xml application context then they use to load it a spring.xml file and as soon as you start this container it used to load your xml file and it used to scan all these classes and it will create object now in spring boot scenario you don't need this container you need not to use class path xml application context to load your xml and this xml mapping also not required you may remove this xml then where i am doing component scan if i remove xml and where i am doing this application context class path xml application context loading my xml where is all this stuff so you don't require all this creating xml file as i was saying right lot of configuration button they remove you need not to create xml file you need not to scan your classes you need not to load it into any main method class you forget all that stuff and just focus on creating your classes and finally when you run this run this and see what will happen if you see it is creating your configuration object repository object service object utility object controller object and you are at the rate bean also did it missed any bean 1 2 3 4 5 6 7. all your beans got created here all the objects got created which are you have mentioned here all these three types then how it is loading where is that component scan so here in the main method which is generated automatically right you can see one at the rate spring boot application annotation which is having by default component scan inbuilt at the rate spring boot application is having component scan so then okay component scan by default it is having at the rate component scan by default it will have so here usually we will pass package names for dot rb dot star something like this but you need not to do that stuff at the rate spring boot application itself is having component scan and which package it will scan i didn't mention any package name then which package it will scan as per pom file this is your root package com dot rbu and this main method class is part of com dot rbu dot hello okay so as per this spring boot application what it will do it will get the current package current package is com dot rbu dot hello in this component scan what it will do it will put by default it will put com dot rbu dot current package com dot rbu dot hello dot star default it will get your current package inside current package if there is any class it will scan them so then it will scan all these packages component repo service utility web and if it find classes with stereotypes then it will start creating objects okay component scan is fine it will scan and where it is loading it into ios where your ios container is starting if you see here this spring boot application annotation mentioned on top of this application class and we are asking from a main method we are asking spring boot application run method to load this class file which class file this application class file what we have in that application class file a spring boot application annotation which is contains component scan as well so internally what it will do spring boot application dot run method it is starting your ioc container it is starting your ioc container just by loading this packages 
for the component scanning. So your IOC container will do immediately. It will pick up this package. Inside this package, if there are any classes, it will start creating objects. Once it is ready, right? Application, Spring Boot application dot run method can return you your application context object if you want. You can get your application context object. And from here, if you want to get your beans, you can get them. If you want your controller beans, hello controller. And you can call your hello controller methods if you have any. Not only object creation, auto wiring, all that stuff, whatever Spring used to handle, right? All that stuff it can achieve here. So if you want any auto wiring here, you can do it. Hello service. Simple application context only. Simple application. We will try that okay yeah so you can auto wire your objects here as usual and if you have any method you can execute like in service class i want to put a method public void hello hello from service and from service, I wanted to call DM. So you can have other repository here. I want to call repository method. Something public void the save. service you can call your repo methods controller can call your service method finally once you get your hello controller object you can call what is that method We have method here. Acha, what I'm doing from constructor, I'm calling it public void. Hello. So you can call hello method of controller. You got hello controller object from here. I can call controller method. And this is auto void already with service, so I can call service method. Service is auto void with the repository, so I can call repository method. So end to end flow you can execute from here. So when you run it, you can see comfortably your container creates all the objects, and as dependency injection also happened, you can see till save method your flow is executed. Okay, and uh, you want to see this in print, right? Annotation config application context. This is the class that is returning to you. Okay. So if you want to get into it, get into it. 
type mismatch cannot convert from configurable application context to annotation config application context. And so maybe proxy class. Extending from generic application context, generic application from abstract application context, abstract application context from default, and configurable application context implementation. Configurable application context is a child of application context. Application context is a child of uh, so many. So this is the parent, grand, grand, grand parent, which are we used. Application context of application context for all the contexts. You can use it. Until unless you don't have any requirement, you you need not to get this object. But in few requirements, you need to get your object. Definitely in my current requirement, I'm using configurable application. Configurable application context. My application is simple batch processing application. Same way I'm getting objects, I'm executing all the flow. Finally, I'm doing shutdown. You know, right? Life cycles which call shutdown close method. Just to shut down my application. Of course, by default it will shut down. When we call it, all the shutdown hooks also executes right so that's the reason i'm using configurable application context to shut down it so once everything executed it will go down though you have tomcat dependency also i believe it will make it down for now we don't have but yeah so this is how component scan will perform scanning all the classes from your current package if your classes are not part of current package, then obviously it will not scan. So all these classes are part of current package. Current package means inside hello only you can see them. Let's say randomly if I create a class from dot rbu and I'll create something a package outside of it a package name called hi there i'll put one more class hi controller at the rate controller Now, will it create this high controller object? See. I can see config hello 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 creating your bean and hello execution only. Where is high controller object? Not created because it is out of the context out of the package. When you have such packages, you can put them here. In Spring Boot application itself, they given provision here to add scan based packages. You can give all your packages which you want to scan in an array, any number of packages with any names. Um, dot rbu dot, that is a high package. I can give like this. And if you have something else, XYZ packages, you can put them here. Now run it. High controller object is created. And what about other classes? We got. Only high is called. Current package it ignored. It is overridden. 
So put your current package also. Comma. It's okay. Even if I remove star also, it will go inside that package. Okay. So now it is creating all the outputs from all the packages. So if you now compare with your traditional application, right? You can see the difference. here. No XML. No such bean configuration stuff. No application context object creation stuff. Nothing. And if you are generally, we don't deviate this package. We don't go out of this package. All the packages we try to manage inside this hello world. Usually up, up to application name we put here com dot ICICA dot if it is a customer application customer case cc dot cc inside dot dot cc you can have lot of packages cc dot web cc dot utilities cc dot service cc dot repository cc dot configurations cc dot some x y z element dot 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 you can have any number of packages but we try to manage always same root package. We will. We should not have multiple root packages. The application will have one root package. If you maintain multiple, then it's up to you. You need to maintain properly all the configurations. Okay. So this is not recommended. Maintaining a different roots. Okay. So I think that's it. It's a basic beginning, okay? Lot of stuff to learn. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You should not do that. You should not do that, okay? If it is a standalone application, then you can play. But in case of web applications, right? What is the job here with this? I never get my controller object manually. Always controllers or my rest classes will be called from front ends. Usually will not have any requirement with this one. Okay. In case if you want, then you can use. But usually we will not do any such stuff. Okay. Think transactions based batch. Yeah, we we will consider. I mean, I will I will take one simple example. Okay. Between right, before asking me, just find an example and see what is batch processing. There are many tools also, not only Spring Batch, why this batch processing is required, what are all the alternative tools we have. Is batch, Spring Batch is the only uh, you know, one we have or else is there any other way to process it? Will it do failure handling or not? Just Google it. Okay. Simple examples I can give you, but beyond that, if you want to explore, yeah, that's it for today. Tomorrow we will see uh, all the servers. We will start with the web. After web, I'll cover this logging and other part, Spring banner creation. Okay, so that will be interesting if with the web. I don't want to go with this standalone stuff. Okay, yeah.